Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a Mythbusters show and tell that, frankly, I can't believe I haven't shown and told about before. Um, one very good reason why I haven't done this show and tell is because the thing that I am going to show and tell you about was touring around the country for the last 10 years. Uh, if you were lucky enough, uh, the museum exhibition, Mythbusters, the Explosive Exhibition, might have come to a city near you and you might have gone to see it. Uh, it is uh, an exhibit that Jamie and I did in conjunction with a wonderful team led by a man named Jeffrey Curley. Um, and we're exceedingly proud of the Mythbusters Explosive Exhibition. Amazingly, it came up at a time that we were in a very contentious contract negotiation with Discovery. Um, and yet, we were able to have a really important amount of creative input to it. And that was, I mean, it was just great. It, like, it was a potentially tough experience that became really excellent because of the team we got to work with. Um, <clears throat> my friends Adam Coben, Adam Tobin and Carl Willett represented Jamie and I on the creative team um, and pushed some of our ideas through, um, including running in the rain, <laughs> having a museum exhibit in which people were like drenched in the museum setting is not something that people did very much. And maybe they still don't for very good reasons, but uh, like we really pushed the interactivity. Uh, and again, I'm proud of what, what the Mythbusters Explosive Exhibition uh, achieved, but it's done now. Uh, COVID sent it packing and uh, that stuff is, well, th th there's some plans for the stuff from the exhibition. I kept a few pieces that were personal of mine, and I'm going to be showing you a few of these over the next few weeks. But the first one is one of my, so we get asked all the time what our favorite builds are, and I always forget about this particular build. But my, the, the stuff that I'm really like, the stuff that I get excited about are the things that we did that no one ever did before. That's the kind of thing that I get excited about, like concrete airplane, lead balloon. We did those things in ways that they hadn't been achieved before. And I feel like it's rare that you feel pretty confident that you were the first to do something in a really specific way. That's, that's a lovely bit of exploration, right? Humans are explorers. We, we like to do that. Um, and the particular kind of exploration that I dig is the impossible. Right, the impossible lead balloon. Is it impossible? Let, 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 let's try and make one, see if it is. So when I was a kid, there was a famous joke in which a man is, I don't know, I think he is tasked with asking a genie or a omnipotent power something impossible. And the punchline of the joke is he says, catch my fart and paint it green. <clears throat> now that's supposed to be impossible and then something that's extra impossible. So catching a fart is supposed to be impossible, painting it green, extra impossible. I have no idea about painting it green, but ladies and gentlemen, I have captured a fart, and this is the device that I use to do it. This is the flightus containment device. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this is, I mean, Look, I know it's it's not necessarily something to be proud of, and yet, and yet, reader, I am proud of this. Let me walk you through how this thing worked. We we knew we wanted to uh, uh, we knew we wanted to investigate the components of farts. By the way, we weren't even allowed to say right. So let me explain that way back in the early days of MythBusters we did a myth that they really didn't want us to do. Uh, and the myth is specifically about a Civil War era soldier who was shot through one of his testicles by a bullet, which then continued on its journey. After piercing his testicle, it went on its journey and another 50 feet impregnated, oops, sorry, excuse me, uh, embedded itself in the stomach of a woman and apparently impregnated her. This is a famous, ridiculous story. There's no way it's possible, but Mythbusters tackled it in a family-friendly way. Amazingly, well, the name of the episode, it's one of my all-time favorites, Son of a Gun. Yeah. Uh, and when we tackled it in a safe way, um, Gina McCarthy was the GM of Discovery at that point. I really... Just a terrific GM. We really liked working with her. Uh, she reached out and was like, I, 
Our hats are off to you guys. You did this in the most family friendly way. Are there other other episodes that uh, we may have rejected in the past, which we might revisit? And we said, yes, we want to do an entire episode devoted to farts. And they were like, sure, but you can't say the word fart. So we had to say flatus. We couldn't even say my second favorite, which is Chanel number two. Yeah, it's a good joke, but it's a brand name. Uh, at any rate, during the course of this episode, we wanted to um, find, not everyone produces flammable farts. Some people don't. Some people produce farts with other gases than methane in them. It all depends on your gut bacteria. Uh, we wanted to investigate whether I produced methane-laden farts to, before I lit them on fire, and this is the device that I built to actually capture them. Uh, so to walk you through how this works, the funnel goes beneath the water level of the bath while the entire thing is completely full of water. Uh, and the most important part is that the top of this tube is full of water higher than this catching device, the flatus catcher. So what happens is you fart into the funnel, the said air pocket rises to the top of this graduated cylinder. You can see I put these little gradations on it that are milliliters, I believe. Once that was there, we need to get it from here into here. And we do that with a little bit of pressure. And that pressure is provided by the head in this tube. So what happens is we open this valve, boop, and it provides a little bit of extra head pressure under here to go up. We allow that head pressure to be activated by opening this valve, this valve, and this valve. And now we've got throughput, and the pressure here pushes the flatus pocket in through this tube, up into the catcher, close these off, pull this out, and lo, you have captured the fart. Yeah. Now. That being said, I will tell you that it is difficult to go to work and fart on cue. No matter what you're eating, it is not easy. And <clears throat> like many people, I'm a high producer in the morning and a lower producer later on in the day. Thus, we were having trouble just not even testing this device, but getting it to a point where we could test it. So I captured, I think, two farts uh, over a couple of days, and it was like kind of kicking our butt. And that's when, and I think she'd be okay with me telling this story, that's when my producer, Alice, decided to uh, pony up and take one for the team. She said, everybody out of the room. <laughs> she cleared Jamie's shop, and then we gave her like three of these things, and an hour later she came back with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and it turned out that we produced different types of uh, different types of gases. It was an excellent and excellent test and way for the producer to like really bring it on home. Um, for the bacteriologists among you, yes, you are correct. Water is far from a sterile atmosphere, and when one wants to test the um, organic components of a gas. Filtering it through water is not always the best idea. I fully, I agree with you. I get that. Yes. And still, we, we caught a fart. I mean, like, we caught a fart. Yes. Uh, I just love that this was in a museum exhibition for 10 years. It remains one of my all-time favorite builds. I actually built this display just to have in my office. I didn't build it for the exhibition. It's just that when it came time for the exhibition, they were like, can we put a, a plexiglass box around that and put it up on the wall? And I was like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Like I said, this is not the last piece of Mythbusters ephemera that I'm looking forward to showing you guys, but um, it is indicative of the kind of builds that really thrilled us that were super weird and strange and awesome. Thank you guys for joining me for this uh, show and tell. As always, I will see you next time. Stay safe.